Hello and welcome to the Weight Free Wellness Podcast. I'm Tara Bachland, and in today's episode, I'm actually talking about a topic that I was really reticent about getting into, and it's mainly about using the term weight because so many of us have been programmed about a healthy, an unhealthy way of actually using the term weight. So I've made the decision that I'm going to talk about it and really make a point of talking about it in a healthy way. So this was actually a recording from a live webinar and Facebook live session that I did. I did do the favor of editing out all the chit chat in between, and uh, but the Q&A is still included at the end. If this is something that you would love to participate in, just make sure to stay tuned to the Weight Free Wellness newsletter, the Facebook group, and so forth, and you will definitely be notified, especially on Facebook, of of any live events. I really love interacting with you, whether it's the Facebook Live or just regular social media interaction. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, pretty much anywhere you can be, (laughs) I'm there also, and uh, love reaching out and connecting. So today's topic is the five reasons for weight gain that you need to know about. And if weight has been an issue, these are not only topics and reasons that you want may need to know about, you actually probably want to know about them because your body is actually sending a message if this has been an issue. So I'm going to leave you to listen to this. This is episode number 60. If along the way you find it, you're thinking about a friend, oh gosh, so-and-so would love listening to this. Please do share it with them. That's how we spread the word about this great podcast. And it really helps us to know that we're creating something of value to you. So go ahead and share away and um, enjoy. Here you go. Free wellness is not all about weight. So you may be wondering, why am I talking about weight? And the reason is because there are times when we feel that we're doing everything, everything right, and you very well may be doing everything right. And the weight just simply is not coming off. And I encourage people to not use weight as a measurement because you know you can feel when you're at a healthy state for yourself when you're the more you get in tune with yourself especially you can feel and sense that and so there are people who are generally more heavy like when I tell people and I'm not going to share my weight over the screen like this. If, if we meet in person, I'll gladly share my weight with you because there needs to be context here. But when I share my weight with people, they are astonished that I weigh as much as I do because I'm, they see me as very thin. But the thing is, is that I'm also very fit. I have a lot of muscle for my size on my body. Um, and so muscle weighs more than fat. So if I just went by weight... I could be very disturbed by how much I actually weigh. And um, the reality is I weigh uh, on the heavier side of what would be a BMI. Now, I know they've changed some of the standards for body mass indexing, um, but even if um, I were to go to the doctor, I'd be within normal, but uh, I might be surprised myself how much I weigh. So I really steer clear weighing of weighing myself. I don't use that as a measurement. And so weight free wellness, believe it or not, was a name that came to me. I didn't necessarily conjure it up. I really feel that as I knew the intention of this wellness podcast and wellness business that I wanted to put together, that this name came to me because this is a greater message. This is a greater lesson that I had to learn for myself. And that is weight is not a good measurement. You know if you're overweight and it, it doesn't feel good anyways to look at that number and just have it remind you, right, uh, that you're, you're not in your, um, I'll say ideal, but that can be a dangerous word in some ways too, but you're not in, in the realm of healthy that you would like to be. And so these things I'm sharing with you, I'm, I'm leading with the word weight, but I'm emphasizing, okay, after we talk about this, just ditch that word, okay? Just get rid of it because there's so much more to actually focus on and concentrate on for your own health and wellness other than weight. Weight is not the thing to focus on. So these five things, uh, again, I think most people don't know about these five things because 
you kind of have to go through a lot of stuff. And I went through my own journey with my own body and um, happened to be interested in health and wellness. So that helped a lot. And so this journey helped me learn about how to treat my body uh, with food, with exercise, and also just understanding how it operates more rather than just treating it like a simple machine, you know, like you, like your vehicle relatively compared to your body. It's a simple machine or at least the vehicles, you know, 20 years ago were a lot simpler or engines. So your body is so much more complicated than that. And so it's not just about putting fuel in, you know, starting the engine and, and getting going. There's a lot more going on in the body. And sometimes, especially if you know that you're, you're stuck at a, an unhealthy weight. And I'm, again, I'm going to use um, these terms of, um, uh, of weight right now in this podcast, in this talk, but I want you to ditch it after this, okay? Just take these points along with you. So let's get into some of those five reasons that I've learned over the years that go beyond, you know, just what uh, putting food in, the simple engine uh, metaphor, which is um, putting food in, getting energy out. And so the first one that I want to emphasize is that um, adrenal fatigue can be a major component to weight gain and or, and or having weight just remain on your body that you just can't seem to get off. And especially if you have this, this um, the tire around the middle uh, section of your body, that is really an indicator that you're carrying this weight because of imbalance in the adrenals. Now, what can happen is, now I'm going to give a synopsis. Like I said, I have guests who come on who explain this in more detail. Um, I'm giving you a synopsis of what these things can be. And also, at the end of each of these points, I'll also indicate who you might go to to take care of this particular type of weight issue. Now, again, this is weight-free wellness. So after this podcast, I want you to ditch the term weight out of your mind and you're starting to move towards the solution, okay? So the weight is no longer an issue. You're moving on a solution-oriented path to improve your health. So it's no longer an issue about weight. So how your adrenals are functioning is very important. They play uh, multiple roles within your body, and they're part of the endocrine system. So they're basically part of a, a chain of command within your body that shares how to communicate and uh, which actions to start doing within your body. So it's like, the, um, in a basic way, I would explain, it's kind of like the telephone. Remember playing the telephone game when you were a kid and you, you was it telephone? I think that's what it was called, where someone would start with a message and then they would tell someone else and then they would tell someone else and at the end you would the last person the last kid usually would say what they heard the message was and usually it was a very funny different version from the message that started now that can happen within our body and the messages start from the top down. And if your adrenals are really exhausted and what happens, how your adrenals become exhausted, a, a few common ways are just being very active, um, you know, pulling all-nighters, uh, not getting a proper... See, here's the thing. When you sleep, you get proper rest with sleep and relaxation or even taking a walk doing light exercise and alternating with vigorous exercise, when you regulate those yourself, what you're doing is you're preparing your body, you're helping your body to re regulate itself later. So if you allow those things to get off track, then soon those things are going to be controlling you. So where, let's say, for example, you're exercising vigorously and you have um, your your cortisol and your, and your adrenaline pop it, pump are pumping because you're in a vigorous exercise, um, but then you are, um, if you do that too often, you can run your adrenals down and you just throw off the whole system. Okay, so I'm getting too detailed. <laughs> I'm going to back off a bit. So what I'm going to recommend is the more you monitor your body as far as getting good regular sleep, 
good regular exercise, not overdoing the exercise. Yes, you can overdo exercise and you can underdo exercise. And figuring out which type of exercise is best for your body is really important and helpful for this. And uh, later we'll get into body typing to help you understand which type of exercise is actually more balancing for you. So that is really important because you're going to help your body to continue to maintain a healthy chain of command. Remember that telephone game? The more chaotic your, 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 your life is and you don't maintain some semblance of balance, the more likely you're, to, you're going to throw things off. So I'm going to back up. Um, so... If you're experiencing adrenal fatigue, here are some symptoms that you're going to feel. First of all, that you your weight seems very stubborn and just won't go away. So you can exercise all you want. You can eat right all that you want. You seem to be doing everything right, but it, it won't come off. So that would be one symptom. Also, adrenal fatigue is if you're feeling tired all the time. Very key indicator that that chain of command has been... Uh, disrupted. And so your sleep-wake cycles will be off. Uh, you'll be what they call tired and wired. So you'll be tired at 10 p.m., but you'll uh, simultaneously be over-energized. And that's because your, your system, this chain of command, has gotten thrown off. And another one of those things is that you just need, you feel that you need that cup of coffee or two or so in the morning or even in the afternoon. Again, this is a sign that that chain of command, that system has just been thrown out of whack. Now, I already got into some details. It's easy for me to get off on a tangent like that. And so if you're looking for help in that realm, what I would recommend is to see a functional medicine practitioner or a naturopath in particular because they'll do some testing that will test your hormones where they're at, particularly like um, your cortisol levels is very important uh, and what how those levels are varying through the day because the cortisol needs to change um, throughout the day. So um, I see some questions are coming up. Uh, I'm gonna get to the Q&A later. Most of all, because I'm overly distracted if I try to address them now, but I'm just going to say, hey, thanks for joining. Those of you who are joining live and who are on the webinar, I'll definitely be getting to your, your questions, and um, I appreciate uh, your participation. It's fun for me to participate, which is to have participation, which is why I also get distracted. So because there are a lot of details associated with that, that's why I recommend going to a practitioner, someone not just a... Um, like a, a personal trainer, because a personal trainer is oriented to get you to exercise. And your problem sometimes can be actually over exercise. You're releasing too much of that adrenaline and cortisol and it's throwing your body off. So the solution to me for adrenal fatigue, now I have some supplements and stuff that I use, but it's really uh, a, a point that you want to address with someone who will look at it holistically for you. And I would go particularly to a functional medicine or naturopathic um, practitioner. So remember today what we're covering are the five reasons for weight gain that most people don't know about. These are things that I've learned over the years dealing with my own uh, weight and health issues. Now I've maintained a very healthy weight for gosh, um, 15 years. Um, and it's because I put healthy practices into place and also, um, learned about these things. The maintaining part is also learning about these things, like not over-exercising, which can lead to adrenal fatigue. So number two, which I think looking back, the reason I really struggled with weight is um, because I had gluten intolerance. So I did a, a podcast not too long ago with Dr. Rory. He's a functional medicine practitioner and someone I work with <clears throat> And um, we did a podcast of, is gluten intolerance, is it, um, I forget what we called it, is it, uh, is it real, essentially? Is it just a fad? And, you know, to me, it really isn't. I mean, it kind of can seem like a fad because it's like gluten-free this, gluten-free that, or, um, you know, it just seems fad-like in a way. But gluten intolerance is 
I think so much more common than we think. Now, my hypothesis, this is a hypothesis, is that the reason we're having all this gluten intolerance and issues are because of the genetic modification of wheat and also because of the chemicals that we've used on these plants for years. And it's just wreaking havoc on our bodies. Our bodies are not adjusting because they're not meant to change that quickly to uh, environmental changes like this. So gluten intolerance is a really really big one. And looking back, I can see that so much of the bloating that I was experiencing and the pain and the discomfort. And honestly, there were many other issues that stemmed from this, but I share that in another podcast about my own health journey. So I won't get too much into that. Um, But you can check out the podcast that I do in particular about my own journey. So some signs that you may be having gluten intolerance um, in particular in this area, of course, we're addressing weight. Now remember, this is the Weight Free Wellness Podcast. So after this podcast, I want you to forget about the word weight and just see yourself on a solution-oriented path towards health. Your weight, yes, may be a symptom, especially if it's sticking around, it's not budging, um, but it's trying to tell you something. So you'll find, I'm sure, some solutions, some ideas here that will help you on your health-oriented journey. So I want to remind you of that. That's really important. So some signs that you could be having gluten intolerance, of course, I mentioned the bloating. Uh, For me, that was so uncomfortable. There was gas. Uh, I had symptoms like IBS and and Crohn's, which um, with diarrhea, Uh, it was really painful and also embarrassing. It's, It's really difficult to go through. So if that's you, I definitely recommend seeking help. So a few more symptoms. Um, Again, if the weight just does not seem to go away, you're doing everything else right, it seems, but you always have this weight sticking on you. Um, I believe, and in my experience, um, it's for a couple of reasons. First of all, your body is having an allergic type of response. Now, I'm not going to say that you have an allergy, um, and there are different ways to test for celiac, which we get into in different podcasts. Um, but your body is just reacting. Um, Also on the natural health route of this, uh, wheat and grains are a yin type food and yin is naturally uh, more, um, it builds tissue in your body. So the yin concept comes from Chinese medicine and it just means that uh, it will, it makes your body add tissue and that could be muscle but usually it's more of the adipose like tissue and that's okay your body needs a healthy amount of fat but the way that our grains are cultivated these days usually does not lend to us having the healthy type of fat on our body and in in a balanced amount so that's another one Um, the last one i'm going to add here gluten intolerance if you just feel cranky And honestly, this may seem really silly, but uh, I know looking back and even when I do have gluten on occasion, it just throws me off and I feel off and cranky and um, my husband's on this call. Maybe, maybe he shouldn't chime in on this one, (laughs) but um, you know what they, the, the recent uh, meme type word they call hangry, you know, because gluten also can throw off your blood sugars. So there are a number of symptoms that you may be experiencing in, in addition to that weight that just doesn't go away. And in particular, if you still are uh, a supporter of the low fat diet and high grains, um, uh, you'll be happy to know that you um, can enjoy some really wonderful food and uh, help to lose those pounds again. We're going to ditch the term weight after this podcast, but uh, especially with finding the solution. So if you find that this is an issue, I would really recommend, again, to see a functional medicine or natural functional medicine practitioner or naturopath. Now, especially in both of these fields, there are people who specialize in gluten intolerance and gastrointestinal issues. And um, I would definitely seek out one of those people. Now, they're wonderful practitioners that do general practices. Um, But if you find someone who focuses on the gastrointestinal tract and these types of issues um, having to do with gluten intolerance, celiac disease, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, you're going to find a lot more direction and they're usually much more up to date on the latest um, that can really help and get you healing much more quickly. So number three, 
And then these are the five uh, reasons for weight gain that you may not be aware of. These are not too many people know about this. Um, and through my own experience have, and research have found these um, to be really key. So number three is a little bit more esoteric in the sense that it's not something that we see as physical, as a physical cause. So number three, get ready for this. Sometimes our weight, if we have a layer of fat on us, that can just be a layer of protection, especially, and I'm going to say this gently but firmly, some, some of us are not able to create healthy boundaries. And so our body does it for us. Now, it can happen in many ways, but this is one of them, where if you find that you're naturally a, a nurturing type, a naturally nurturing type of person, um, you like to have your family and friends around you. And um, many of us do. It's not that other of people um, who are not as nurturing don't want people around, but you have a different motivation naturally. And we'll get into this more in the body typing and the earth type in particular. It's just part of your makeup. And that's okay. I'm here to emphasize also in this, this, these challenges with weight and self-image and health that all of these symptoms play, a, they have a reason, they have a cause. And our, it's like our, our body and our life are indicating to us to um, get through these things and learn from these things and then we can move on. And in a lot of cases, then we can also help and teach others. So sometimes this, this um, I've seen this come up a lot, and I'll be very specific here, or rather specific. It shows up a lot, particularly in women who are the nurturing mother figure, and they just want their family and friends around. They just want everybody to be happy and cozy and join in on the festivities and have fun and, you know, just gather together at the dinner table. And so since that is their primary drive, you know, they want other people to have fun too, not just them. But since that's their primary drive, uh, they naturally don't want to push people away or even give any hint of moving people away from them. So these types of people will actually put up with quite a bit of grief and guff from other people. And so this, uh, if they're having trouble losing weight or they have this, um, usually it's a thicker layer of weight all over the body, as opposed to like the adrenal fatigue person has the tire around their belly. This type of person, whether male or female, tends to have the weight more evenly distributed throughout their body and um, not so much focused in one area. Now, there may be, of course, there are a bit different distributions, but this is um, it's more of an archetype um, than, than anything. And so this layer creates an actual type of barrier, um, and, but it's a soft barrier, right? You know, when you hug a person like this, you know, they're, they're warm, they're cozy, they're just comfortable, wonderful people usually to be around. Um, the challenges in, what I, in, in a one-on-one in -on -one consulting situation with a person like this, if they came to me and they were, you know, especially if they're at the point where they really knew that this was an issue, I would work with this person in understanding their own innate value and what this situation is doing for them and what is doing really against them, how it may be holding them back from um, other types of happiness in their life. So <laughs> again, I'm going too deep in on a tangent. We're only on number three <laughs> and uh, we're already half an hour into this. So I, uh, you can tell that I'm really passionate about these topics and they mean a lot to me because I, I know from my own journey in health and wellness, weight issues and self-image that these are very important topics and they come up in our lives in, in multiple ways, but particularly our body and our, 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 how our health is showing up in our life are real key indicators. So I'm going to back up just a moment. So this person who has a self-protecting layer of fat around them, is um, generally a nurturing person. They just want, they want to be happy. They want others to be happy. They're generally a peacemaker. If not outwardly, they at least uh, want some semblance of peace around them. So they may not be the person to like jump out and say, hey, cut it out. Let's, let's take a break and let's you know, chill out here. Um, but they definitely want that within themselves. 
So um, I'll just leave on this one note. And what, in addition, what I would say to this person is that sometimes people take advantage of that niceness and it not, isn't always the, the intent for a person to take advantage or, or to um, cross those boundaries um, that you have a hard time setting up. Um, but I would work with a person on recognizing those situations and how they can, um, in a way, stand up for themselves so that their their body, their weight doesn't have to create this um, kind of, in a way, false barrier that doesn't really serve them. So uh, obviously, that's a passionate topic of mine. So, but I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. Um, but I will end with. I would suggest to this type of person, yes, there may be some biochemical stuff going on in their body. They may have adrenal fatigue issues or gluten intolerance in addition. So still that functional medicine or naturopathic practitioner could be very helpful or a dietitian, nutritionist, so forth. But it also may help a lot to work with a counselor in identifying those boundaries and um, what those boundaries may or may not be doing for them and the relationships they have in their life. Now, sometimes a good friend can fill in that role, but more often than not with this type of person, that friend um, may not be strong enough to uh, help you identify those boundaries, or they actually may be one of those persons that pushes the boundaries. So I would recommend seeking someone outside of, of your immediate group of friends or family. So that was a big one. That's, that was pretty passionate, a passionate topic for me, which you can tell. Um, so number four out of these five things that um, cause weight gain that most people don't know about, number four is you're just simply eating the wrong things. Now, there's so much information out there. How could it be that people these days are just eating the wrong things? And that's kind of the crux of the situation. It's that there's so much information out there. How do you know which are the right things for you to eat? And there are some simple things to make sure, you know, of course, uh, really eliminating or really minimizing grains. Um, you may want to drastically decrease them for a while if you know that weight really is an issue and they can be part of a maintenance plan, again, for that yin aspect of food that we talked about earlier. So there's some basic things, of course, if you're drinking sodas, whether they're um, diet or regular, you don't want to drink the diet kind either, either and I'm not going to get into the details of that right now. Um, but so there's some pretty basic things to get out of the way. But I'm again, like I promised in this, this um, event, I said that I would mention the few things that most people don't know about. And um, so you may be, again, the five reasons that you're, you may be experiencing weight gain that you don't know all these reasons why. And I see the question about yin. I mentioned that earlier. When we get into the body typing at the very end, I'll mention that again because that ties in. So you may be eating the wrong things, okay? So maybe you're working out like crazy. You're doing everything right. And um, you're doing those pre and post workout drinks or shakes. That's a big thing to watch. There are many different kinds of pre, post, during workout drinks, and they're very different qualities. Now, I'm gonna, not going to mention any here. This is something that I would really recommend you work with. Uh, some a, a nutritionist, dietitian, trainer, someone who's been through it, someone who does this regular kind of working out and knows what your goals are, because you you could be actually totally sabotaging all the great working outs and workouts that you do by that post-workout drink that you're drinking. And it could even be if you're using all, you're making your own shake and you're blending all your own fruits and vegetables and, and putting on in all kinds of powders, you could end up actually overloading your body with tons of sugars. So there's a misnomer here, you know, that all these shakes are really awesome for you. And yes, there are many good things about if you blend your own fruits and vegetables into a shake, but our taste buds are naturally acclimated to taste to want sweet things, right? And sweet is usually fruit in those shakes. And there, honestly, there are a lot of powders too that add sugars. So without getting too detailed here, that's something that you want to look into and make sure that you're not getting 
Um, you're not sabotaging yourself after an awesome workout and then you just fill your body with a bunch of sugars. I see a couple of people have joined us. Just want to say, hey, um, thanks for joining us. I'll be doing a Q&A at the end, um, mostly because I have to keep my mind focused. <laughs> um, similarly, on, along the lines of you may just be eating the wrong things, is the similar to number one, which was um, your post-workout or even pre-workout drinks that can be very sugary would also be eating too late. So you may be eating all the right foods you, you feel, but if you're eating too late in the evening, your body goes into conservation mode, and so it just wants to store that on your body. And so you could be doing everything right, it seems, you know, eating the right types of foods, you know, exercising a lot, but if you're, especially if you're exercising a lot and you're at the point where you're building a bunch of muscle, your body's going to be hungry. So it's important to reinforce and fill your body with the right kinds of foods so that it satiates that hunger, but also doesn't leave your body going into um, starvation mode, essentially, or sorry, not starvation mode, but wanting to uh, restore those calories that you've just burned off. So, and then in addition, and this will lead to number five, uh, in addition is generally eating the wrong types of foods for your body. Now, I teach about body typing, which comes from a number of ancient studies, um, including uh, not just ancient studies, but forms of medicine from around the world. Um, what's so fascinating is that these ancient forms of medicine have, this exists in almost every culture. I would say every culture, but I haven't studied all of them, so I don't know for sure, but certainly there are a lot of them, um, like uh, the ancient Greeks, we have the, the constitutional humors from the, the Greeks. Uh, we also have Ayurveda from the Asian Indians. We also have Chinese medicine from the Chinese, of course. There are many others, but I'd just like to name a few. And so these are, uh, these are archetypes that they use to help understand what our body is like and what it, what it does and relate it to plants and to our environment and our time of life and so many things. So I'm not going to get into a body typing seminar here, which <laughs> I seem to be headed in that direction. But what, I, what I'm getting at is we, there are different body types. And so different people's bodies will re respond differently to certain types of foods. And so well, while one person may do awesome on a vegetarian diet, um, and I still recommend supplementing with some animal products, but while one person may do awesome on this kind of diet, uh, another person, me in particular, I can I initially feel really good because of all the phytonutrients and so forth, but very soon after feel feel really depleted. And so knowing what kind of foods actually help your body is the best. So, for example, if if I'm um, for my body type, I know that if I'm going to do my green shakes and um, do blended drinks like that. Um, blended drinks, I mean like shakes, not like uh, alcohol kind of drinks. <laughs> I didn't mean to go in that direction. But um, for me, uh, those can be good every once in a while, but definitely not in the winter. It's too cool for my body. It cools my digestion. And also, uh, I need a lot more fats and much more young type food as opposed to the yin of the of the particularly the fruits. So I'm not going to go too in depth there. I do get into that in my body typing classes. Um, but that's important to know is what kind of foods are really, really jive with your body type. So that goes into number five. So we're talking about the five reasons for weight gain that a lot of people are actually not aware of. And um, that, um, again, with weight-free wellness, I do not typically focus on weight, but sometimes, gosh darn it, that weight just sticks around and no matter what you do, it seems, you know, all the exercising, you know, all the right foods that you've, you've seen come across Facebook or whatever, despite doing your best to do what's right, it just seems to stick around. So these are five reasons that I've seen that most people don't identify um, and so I'm sharing them with you. Um, these are things that I've learned through my own body and research over the years. So number five is 
We cover this briefly. You just might be an earth type, okay? So in my body typing studies I in classes and in my book, I talk about the four different body types, earth, fire, air, and water. And each type has personality aspects, has foods and exercises and habits that help them to feel more balanced. So um, if you're experiencing that just weight just hangs around on your body, no matter what, you just might be an earth type. And what that means is earlier I talked about the person who's a naturally a nurturer, Earth types are definitely like this. Now, we all have a primary body type and a secondary. We actually have all four body types. We all have earth, fire, air, and water within our constitution, but they come in different amounts. So if a person is really high, has a lot of the earth type constitution, they're definitely going to be more the nurturer type. Uh, they will naturally be, quote, big boned or have just naturally have a thicker layer of fat. And that's just the way they are. In other forms, in, uh, in traditional North American uh, herbalism and medicine, they equate these body types also, they extrapolate them in more into animals. So a couple of animals that may relate um, would be the, the, you know, the ones that actually carry more fat naturally. Um, one that's kind of on the border that's actually more of a fire would be a bear or a grizzly bear. Um, they have actually more fire, but they're kind of on the border. So some people have these combinations. Anyways, that's a fun tangent subject. But if, if you just find that your whole life you've carried extra weight, or again, I'm using this term weight loosely here. We're going to drop it after this podcast, Okay. You got to agree with me here that we're going to drop it because now you have tools, you have insights as to what actually may be going on. And so rather than it being a weight issue, you just got the signals figured out what your body is trying to communicate to you. So it's no longer a weight issue. You're on a solution oriented path. So I have to reemphasize that that's so important. And that's what I teach uh, in my one-on-one -on -one counseling um, consultations and also in my courses, and that there's so much about mentality that goes into a healthy weight and a healthy life journey. It's not just what it seems like it was right in front of you. So an earth type, if you've always been heavy, um, if all of the above matches, if all of what I've mentioned before seems to fit, you probably are an earth type. Um, so what I really recommend is, and for these last two these last two reasons, is to look into your body type. Um, are you earth if you're earthy? This could be a really key indicator into why that weight is just sticking around. You, I've created a really neat. Now, a shorter version of my in-depth quiz from my book, and you can find that at weightfreewellness.com. Um, there's a, a pop-up that will pop up there, but there's also in the right sidebar, there are a couple little people, and you can you can take the body typing quiz. Um, and if you're on Facebook a lot, go to Weight Free Wellness um, Facebook page, and it's also at the top there, what is your body type? It's just a quick, I think it's 15 questions and they're really fun and insightful just by taking the body type assessment you can learn so much about your body and what goes into body typing so you actually are learning along the way it's really fun and insightful it's simple um and it's so to me it's fascinating because we can start to see these patterns in our body and our personality and that extrapolate into our life and most of all what I'm concentrating on teaching right now it's in my book as well are the foods the exercise and the habits that help us to feel more balanced and that's actually when you take the quiz you will get an immediate reading on what your primary body type is, but you will also get a series of emails. Um, once a week, you'll get an email on uh, each of the body types and the foods, the exercises, and the habits to help them to feel more balanced. So you'll, you'll start learning along the way in really comfortable chunk size bits there. So um, we'll, I'll be doing more of these live events as well. Of course, you can always chime in on and join with Facebook Live. Um, definitely the, the webinar participants um, get priority in their Q&A, mainly just because 
I can focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> That's air quality, by the way. I tend, I can have so many ideas and so many things going on, which you can tell I have to continually rein myself in to stay on topic. Um, so a couple of questions that we have here, and go ahead, I'm going to start answering some of these questions. If you have more questions, um, just uh, send them, whether you're on Facebook Live or in the chat, the webinar chat, and uh, I'll get to them here. So from the webinar, we have, how do you control your eating of sugary foods? That's a really good question. So me personally, I... I do like sweet foods, um, but I tend to have a natural cutoff point. So I will ask, I will answer for me, and then um, I will actually give a little bit of highlight on the different body types. Um, so for me, first of all, um, I've done some, I think one of the best things that I've done to help in my health and wellness journey has been to do some cleanses. Actually, the elimination diets, um, it's too much to get into, but I'll just say by doing elimination diets, I was able to feel how my body feels at homeostasis, how it feels when it feels the best. And so I'm continually motivated to feel really good. And I know what that means. So again, you know, even sharing these five reasons for, for uh, weight gain, it comes from my own experience and, and working with others as well. So when you know what it feels like to feel good, like genuinely good, not just on a sugar high because then you have the crash afterwards, uh, to me that's motivating to stay on that healthy path. Uh, now there are other body types that naturally really, really crave sugar. And to me, I think that the answer is very much the same is uh, one is doing um, some kind of cleanse or an elimination diet, which can help cl clear out a number of other things in your body. But also when you join an activity that you just love. And so for me, one of the things, things that I really enjoy is in the summer going mountain biking with my hubby, hubby. And endurance has always been a really challenging one for me. And uh, so when we're out on the mountain biking trail and I can actually keep up with him, I feel so awesome and I don't want to ruin my, my food intake, you know, for the next time that we go out or when we, we kick tie pads or something, these activities where you really feel it, um, instead of turning it around, like I'm not going to exercise because I don't want to feel like crap because I just ate these things. I flip the script and I say, I'm not going to eat those things because I want to do this activity, which is really fun. And the key is to find something that's really fun and um, feel awesome. Um, not only is rewarding because you feel good while you're doing it, um, but afterwards too, all the, the natural hormones that, you know, make you feel good is really awesome. Um, Another question is, how many parts are in an engine? Okay, that's my hubby. He's just being funny when I was talking about the engine analogy. I don't know, John, how many parts are in an engine, but I'm pretty sure there are more parts to the body. So he's a funny guy. Um, <laughs> how did you learn all this info? And can I talk to you about this stuff? Um, absolutely. Uh, like I mentioned before, I try to make myself available um, at least for some quick Q&A stuff, um, whether it's on a webinar like this or also uh, on my website. There's a chat function through Facebook and so forth, um, but I do offer weight-free wellness life coaching, which is about knowing your body type, the foods, habits, exercises that help you to feel more balanced. And we can address some of these issues too and also coach you on where to go to find these solutions. So if you're like, I, you know, I have, I know I've got stuff going on, but I don't even know where to start and where to go. And so I work as a person who has been through these things and um, can shortcut a lot of things instead of you feeling lost and wondering where to go next and is it worth spending money on this or that, uh, I can help shortcut that route for you. So how I learned all this stuff, I... <laughs> 
what I usually tell people is I was blessed with a troubled body as a youth. And so a lot of the issues that people experience in their 40s, 50s, and older, I experienced when I was a child and a teenager and young adult. And so my body taught me a ton of lessons. I had to learn early um, before they were testing, at least in my area in rural Minnesota, before they were testing for celiac, IBS, um, Crohn's disease, and so forth, you know, at the time that I was going through these issues, there was no internet. Um, <laughs> it's hard to believe those days were, <laughs> oh man. Okay, so there was no internet um, and I was a child, so I really had really limited resources. And um, they, the medical professional was just saying, you know, put this cream on because I had really painful skin re issues as a result. Um, and you know, you're, you're normal for a kid, but you know, you, you just know when you're not feeling healthy or normal. And so um, when, as I became more and more able to, to work for myself as a teenager, mostly as a young adult is when things really turned around. Um, I just dove into the books. Um, as the internet had more and more resources, I just dove online looking and researching and trying stuff and using my body as an all, my own uh, testing ground and um, really learning from the people who, who knew the information um, to share. So that's been my biggest, biggest thing. And then also along the way, talking with people uh, working with them and helping them has been a big part of my process also because when I have had other people to to work with and share so um, Those in a short way that has been how uh, Sorry, I had some things pop up on my screen <laughs> um, In in a brief summary, that's how I've been able to learn about all this stuff now the great thing is I actually enjoy learning about this stuff. That's kind of the added benefit is this stuff really fascinates me and I'm always trying to improve my health and well-being in a very well-rounded way. And that's why I started this podcast and the Weight Free Wellness website is because I want to continue to learn more, but at the same time, I want to help and share others. And this has been the most efficient way for me to do that because um, working one-on-one -on -one with people, you know, it's very rewarding to work one-on-one -on -one with people, um, but I only have so much time to work one-on-one -on -one with individuals. Now, I do still offer that as a service at the time being, um, but it's so rewarding to do this podcast and do live events like this because I can help so many more people than just meeting one-on-one. -on -one. And at the same time, especially when I'm doing interviews, I get to uh, read other amazing people's uh, other people's amazing books and their amazing people as well, find about, out about so many more resources and turn people on to the other great resources that are out there as well. Because I know for sure that I don't have all the answers. So uh, this has been, a, well, I hit the, the nail on the head pretty good. We're just under an hour here. Um, I welcome you to join on these events in the future. You can obviously just catch us live on Facebook Live. Um, the webinars, I will be sending out links for that. If you're on the newsletter list, you'll get VIP access to those, so definitely check that out. And then also, if you're wondering more about the body types, um, start with a body type quiz. It's it's free and you'll be getting, um, each week you'll get insight into the body types, the foods, uh, exercise habits, and I have a number of other uh, helpful emails that will be coming along the way that will just show up in your email box, all good stuff. And so you can find that at weightfreewellness.com and it's also pinned at the top of the Weight Free Wellness Facebook um, site there. So um, I think that's it for questions right now. Uh, had a, I had a wonderful time. I hope you enjoyed all the meanderings that we did on this discussion. These are definitely key points and um, I hope that they serve you well. Always feel free to contact me. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.